everyone, this is Zach, the broker for Zach Taylor Real Estate. So today I wanna to go over non-income versus income producing activities. So as real estate agents, when this market is transitioning back to a more balanced market, it's kind of swinging back to be more favorable for buyers. When we get a listing, it might not sell the first day we list it and have 20 offers and close next week. It might take a little bit longer or that listing might actually expire. Or maybe we're working with buyers and those buyer clients with interest rates the way they are, maybe they change their mind and they get priced out or they're just not interested in purchasing a home and now we've lost our client. So I wanted to make this video today so we can fill up our hopper, we can have more opportunities, we can have more at-bats, so that way in case those deals take longer to close or we lose out on a few, we, are have, we have several other clients and deals lined up ready to go. And so how do we do that? How do we get more opportunities lined up? Well, really it comes down to the simple concept of non-income versus income producing activities. And so if you've seen a previous video of mine, it covers the Pareto principle, and that's the 80-20 rule. And so as this applies to real estate, what this means is 20% of the activities we do result in 80% of the outcome. So 20% of the activities make up 80% of the money we're gonna make, and vice versa, 80% of the activities we might do only account for 20% of our income. And so it's really important as this market is transitioning, we need to be very, very intentional with income producing activities. Our daily focus needs to be majority on this side, the 20% that's gonna move our business and make up 80% of our income. We need to focus on this side of the chart if we kind of divide it out like this. And so what does different income producing activities look like? Well, the most important, and we always talk about this, is lead generating. So that's calling people in your sphere of influence, calling for sale by owners, calling expires, networking, that's another big one. We wanna network with people. Also going on showings, because showings, at least if we're showing people homes, we might have an opportunity to write a contract. All these things are income producing activities. And so if we look at somebody's daily schedule, and we see, hey, they're spending four, five, six hours a day on this side, they're gonna have a very successful business. Versus if we're over here, not income producing, and maybe we see, hey, we're sleeping for 10, 11 hours a day, sleep. Maybe we're checking Facebook for two hours, or social media, or TikToks. Maybe we're spending four hours a day watching TV. Maybe we're working out for three hours a day. And so as you can see, over half of our day is already gone on things that are not producing income in our business. We want to, as small business owners, as real estate agents, we want to be on this side because being over here is a quick way to get out of the business. We want to stay in the business for a long time and it can get a little bit more tricky than just these obvious ones over here. But maybe it's uh, creating, maybe it's a Zillow profile. Maybe it's worrying about a social media post. Maybe it's picking up a lockbox. So it could be driving to Home Depot, going through the different aisles, finally finding the lockbox, picking it up, taking it home, learning the combination. Or maybe we just spent hour and a half, two hours just on this one income, that's 10% of our day gone. So we need to prioritize these activities and on our free time or later in the evenings or super early mornings, maybe we can work on a little bit of this stuff. And so with real estate, because there's so many different aspects to real estate, Sometimes it tends to get overcomplicated or we tend to overcomplicate it by worrying about too much. We start spinning in circles, analysis paralysis, and we don't actually start doing the things that we know we need to do in order to have a successful real estate business. So to keep it simple, I think we should look at a different type of business so that way we can take the same application, the same principles and apply it to our own real estate business. And so let's go, let's go way back. Let's go to a lemonade stand. We were all kids. A lot of us ran lemonade stands. So let's go back to that, that type of business. Let's say we wanna sell lemonade. Well, if you want to produce income selling lemonade, what do you need to do? You need to sell the lemonade. You need to go out there. You need to actually go to uh, your neighborhood, the corner, the street, the mall. You need to be in front of people. You need to talk to people. 
you need to have your little lemonade stand and sell lemonade. That's an income producing activity. Instead, instead of going out there and selling, because that's what we want to do is start a successful lemonade business. Let's say instead for the day, we were creating flyers. We were trying different flavors. We were creating a social media account. Maybe we were shopping to find the right kind of cups and everything else. And so you can see quickly how you can spend a whole day on things that don't actually income produce. The income producing activity in a lemonade business is being out there in front of people. It doesn't matter what kind of cups you have. It doesn't matter what flavors. It doesn't matter what your flyers look like. It matters being out there, being in front of people and having that opportunity. Now, if you spend the majority of your day doing this, and then you come home and maybe, maybe your nighttime, maybe then you create flyers. So then the second day you go out, early in the morning, you've passed out flyers around the whole neighborhood, but then the majority of the day, you're still back here at the lemonade stand. Now you might have a couple more sales because you did this and supplemented, you supplemented this with the flyers. And then same, same thing the next day, maybe the third day, your focus was maybe now I implement a couple different flavors on the third day. And then, so now you have your income producing activity, you have your non-income producing, that makes up 20% of your business. And now you start building a bigger and bigger lemonade stand. So same thing with our real estate business. We know what we need to be doing. We know the income producing activities. So the quickest way to check if you're doing the right thing is to audit your daily schedule. Go into your calendar and look at what are you actually doing throughout the day? Does this actually help my real estate business? Does this help another business? Uh, does this not help anything? So look at your daily activities. So let's say, for example, you audit your day and you wake up at, let's say we wake up at 9 a.m. And then let's say, well, we wanna work out for the day and that'll be till 10. And then we want to get ready for the day. We want to take a shower and we're not ready till 11, but then we want to uh, maybe read or something like that until noon. Then we take a lunch break till one. Now we might, um, we might want to start working on some flyers and social media accounts. Now that's two o'clock. And then we get from, all right, fine. Till three o'clock, I'll start calling people. And then three to four, I need a break. And then four o'clock, I gotta get ready. I have a party to go to this evening. And then five o'clock, I'm eating dinner. And then it's seven o'clock and now I have my party. And then I'm in bed by 10. So we did no income producing activities. We had one hour, one hour throughout our whole day. But that's how easy it is to fall into the trap of non-income producing activities. Instead, this schedule right here, this morning, I woke up at 5 a.m. I worked out and I was ready by 6 a.m. I read a little bit till 6.30. I started checking emails from 6.30 to 7. Then I drove to the office and I was here by 7.15. Now I'm ready to go. So before this person has even woken up, I've already worked out. I've already trained a little bit for 30 minutes, read. Then I've gotten ready. I've eaten breakfast and I'm already at the office before they're even up. And then from 8 until noon is income producing activities. So now I have four times the amount of income producing activities as this schedule over here that I just made up. And then I have lunch break and then maybe one to two, I'm doing different business improvements. That's that 80% up here. Maybe I'm doing different things like this, not, uh, not TV. Maybe I'm creating different social media posts. Maybe I had to pick up a lockbox. Maybe I put a sign in the yard, something like that. And then I'm back to it, two to five, income. I'm reaching out to people. I'm calling past people. I'm following up with people. So now I've had four hours plus another three right here. So I have seven hours of income producing activities, seven times what this person has done. So over the course of a month, two months, six months, a year, this type of schedule that people are working is going to shine night and day over what this person is doing, seven times more. So. If you're looking for ways to move the needle in your business, focus on the 20% that matters. Fill your entire day with the 20% income producing activities and you will grow a successful real estate business.